to another edition of the Nightly News. I'm Chris Lee here with LPNN, bringing you all the news that is news, and none of the news that isn't, most of the time. We'd like to uh, thank our sponsors tonight. we got Ted's Marine, H&R Block, and the Page Public Library. And we do have another one that is signing up with us as we speak. So give a big shout out to them and don't forget to support local businesses that support us. It helps us get you the news in real time. And speaking of which, uh, Lois was just on site over at the community center and she live streamed the cooking class that they were having, Tacos on Taco Tuesday. So it looks awfully tasty there. All right, let's see what we have for you guys here tonight. We've got, we're going to keep it a little bit short because tomorrow is the holiday. I'm sure you guys want to get out of here, but we do have a few things for you. So from the Coconino County Sheriff's Office, <clears throat> excuse me, on July 2nd at approximately 1.15, the Coconino County Sheriff's Office received a 911 call about a climbing accident at Oak Creek Vista off of State Route 89A. Multiple agencies responded to assist in the rescue of the injured climber. A 57-year-old male from Tucson, Arizona, had sustained a back injury when he fell approximately 20 feet at the end of his rappel. Due to the location of the patient and the nature of his injuries, search and rescue established a technical rope system to lower a rescuer and basket litter to the patient. Highlands Fire and Guardian Medical personnel had hiked to the patient's location to provide initial treatment and help prepare the patient to be raised by the rope system. The search and rescue litter attendant and the patient were then raised via a mechanical advantage rope system to the top of the canyon and carried out to the waiting ambulance. The patient was transported to the Flagstaff Medical Center for treatment of his injuries. We'd like to give a shout out and a thanks to the Highlands Fire District, Guardian Medical Transport, and Coconino County Sheriff's Search and Rescue Unit. Let's see, uh, we've got a comment here. Harlan says, hello. Hello, Harlan. Thank you for watching. We appreciate it. And thank you all for liking, commenting, and sharing on all of these posts. It helps Facebook get the word out to everyone. All right, uh, we do have some fire restriction updates for the Glen Canyon National Recreation Area. We did put this out earlier as well, but we want to reiterate it. Fire restrictions increased for July 4th in Glen Canyon National Recreation Area. The following acts are prohibited on the area, roads, and trails described below until this order has rescinded. Setting, building, maintaining, attending, or using open fires of any kind in the park in general, and specifically campfires and charcoal fire fires above the high water line on Lake Powell or within developed campgrounds or picnic areas at Glen Canyon National Recreation Area. Stoves fueled by petroleum or liquid propane gas uh, are allowed. See, uh, Ophelia is waving. Good to see you. Thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. Uh, let's see. No smoking except within an enclosed vehicle or a developed recreation site or stopped in an area devoid of vegetation at least three feet in diameter. Discharging or using any kind of fireworks or other pyrotechnic devices is prohibited at all times on federal public lands. Let's see. Uh, <clears throat> we have uh, some other issues here. Let's see. Uh, from Zion National Park. Yesterday afternoon, rockfall came down in the chain section along Hidden Canyon in Zion uh, National Park. Thankfully, no one was injured in the rockfall. According to the news release, the trail will remain closed until the area can be assessed for safety and the trail can be cleared. There is an update. Uh, we, we talked about an accident on the lake last week where someone was uh, injured with a jet ski. Well, we have the name of that and we've actually talked to Encompass Medical Center. Uh, we do have an update that is B. Valvo, one of, uh, one of the people that works over there. A really nice person. We actually know her personally. Uh, last week, we reported on a jet ski accident on Lake Powell. LPNN has received an update regarding the person who was injured in the accident. It was B. Valvo, a nurse practitioner at Encompass Health Services. She was severely injured in the accident and was flown to Flagstaff Medical Center. She remains in the ICU in stable condition and is showing positive signs of progress. So that is good news there. <clears throat> Harlan says, my dad's first live broadcast. <laughs> Is he doing a live broadcast, Harlan? <laughs> we'll have to check it out for you. 
All right, uh, let's see here. From Samsung. Samsung phone owners, beware. That would be me. I got to check out this as well. Samsung phone owners, beware. Some devices have started sending random texts along with your pictures to your contacts without your permission. One major point to be aware of is that the app isn't showing that these texts have been sent. Users have only found out by questions from the recipients of the photos. It has been theorized that the bug is due to an interaction between Samsung Messages and a recent Rich Communication Services or RCS update. The app doing this is the default Samsung Messaging app, but the cause has yet to be confirmed. Samsung is currently looking into the issue and has noted that consumers are encouraged to contact Samsung at 1-800-SAMSUNG if they are experiencing this issue. Until there is a fix for the bug, there are two things Samsung owners can do. First, you can revoke Samsung's messages permissions to access storage to avoid whatever is causing this from sending their files out. And the second option is to switch to another texting app, which doesn't seem to be affected by this bug as of yet. All right, moving on to a little bit of the events going on in Tuba City. Starting just a little while ago, the Tuba City Independence Celebration started. There are games, a cookout, live bands, a hot dog eating contest, and fireworks. Head on out to the Tuba City High School football field and join in the celebration if you happen to be close to the area. I do believe it's going on until midnight tonight. Uh, let's see, 4th of July closures tonight. Government offices, the library, the community center, and banking facilities will be closed Wednesday, July 4th in observance of Independence Day. Here in the city of Page, here's the official list of events. Let's see, the parade starts at 10 a.m. There were a lot of people asking. Make sure you guys share this and get the word out. The parade starts at 10 a.m. We will be broadcasting the parade live, and uh, let's see what else we have here. Park activities will start at the flagpole at 11. There will be an opening ceremony at that time. There will also be various games throughout the day, musical chairs, sack races, watermelon eating contests, pinatas, and the Page Fire Department will be out there with their water cannon, the really big water cannon. For the younger kids, there will be a fish pond for them to enjoy. <clears throat> Many cities in both Arizona and Utah have been canceling their 4th of July fireworks displays due to the dry conditions. Additionally, many areas are under fire restrictions, so please check the area that you are going to be in on the 4th for those restrictions. For those that are in areas that are not under consumer grade fireworks restrictions and are looking for their own fireworks, the Americans Motorcycle Club has their fireworks stand up until the 4th, that will be tomorrow, just off of Highway 89. And don't forget uh, they are having a small event out there in Big Water at the ball field where you can set off your own fireworks as long as you do it during their designated time, which I have over here somewhere, uh, possibly. Let's see where we're at here. There we are. From 8.30 to 10.30 Arizona time in Big Water, you can go set off your fireworks at the ball field. Um, you're only allowed to use Utah pro uh, approved fireworks. Uh, you cannot set off fireworks anywhere else. Uh, let's see, in the picnic or the playground area, only in the ball field. Uh, so they say here, only in the designated areas. No fireworks within the city limits of Big Water except within the designated ball field during that designated time. The city of Big Water and Big Water Fire Department invites everyone to have fun and be safe. The Americans Motorcycle Club will be assisting with safety and parking. So keep an eye out for those guys and don't forget to go buy those fireworks as it is for a charity and a good cause. All right, let's see what else we have here. Also, remember the sound and vibration from fireworks will scare your animals. Please keep your pets indoors on the 4th, and if you do leave, keep the TV or stereo turned on to keep your animals calm. For more tips on how to keep your pets safe tomorrow, watch our interview with Dr. Roundtree of Page Animal Hospital. We will be live broadcasting the parade and our special live interview with Mr. Mike Creedle, the pyrotechnician working on the page fireworks immediately after the parade. So definitely tune in for that one. We will also be broadcasting the fireworks display live tomorrow night, as long as we can get a good enough signal. Last year it was a little iffy. So we will definitely try for that one. 
Uh, we also have another event here. This is kind of a big one. Um, it's a new event that just came out and came across our desk. It's called The Hot Seat. I've already shared here on the news feed, uh, but make sure you guys share it and check it out. This is called The Hot Seat. It's, uh, it's an open forum, kind of a town hall sort of thing, where you can meet the candidates. It's going to be hosted over at The Bowl. Uh, let's see, they're going to be doing drink specials. And uh, they're going to be doing questions uh, for all the candidates. So they say, tell us what you want. This is your city. Register to vote in the primary elections by July 30th. Uh, it says here, come meet your candidates for Page City Council as we all sit down and listen to what you have to say and answer your questions in this town hall style meeting. All current candidates are welcome to join. It's time to talk with the people and not at them. Bring your best questions and ideas. If you need more information, you can contact Dave Doyle at d.doyle at icloud.com. Uh, let's see, they're going to be doing that on the 14th and the 28th at noon. So we'll go ahead and post that uh, in our news feed again for you guys. But it looks like an interesting event, and I know at least two candidates that are going to be there. So uh, good stuff on that. Let's go ahead and see what the weather's going to do to us uh, tomorrow, shall we? And see if there's any rain in the future. Let's go ahead and transfer that over. So tonight we got a low of 72 degrees with those winds just below 10 miles an hour. Tomorrow on Independence Day, we have a high of 98 with a low of 74. And those winds later in the evening are going to be just over 10 miles an hour. On Thursday, 103 for the high, 78 for the low. Friday, 101 for the high with 79 for the low. But if you can see that right there, look, we have a 12% chance of rain. I don't even know if, is it showing over there? Yes, it is. And uh, a little bit higher, 19% chance of rain overnight for Saturday. And then you can see little tiny blips. There's a 21% chance there and it kind of varies. But as you know, the farther in the distance it is uh, in time, the harder it is to predict the weather. So we'll have to keep an eye on it, keep our fingers crossed, and hope we can get some of that moisture up here because we certainly need it. But tomorrow looks like it's going to be a beautiful day, nice and sunny, only 98 degrees, and the wind doesn't look like it'll be too bad until probably around 5 p.m. where it's going to be right at around 11 miles an hour. <clears throat> Excuse me. Well, thank you guys very much for uh, for joining us. We do appreciate it, and we thank you for liking, commenting, and sharing on all of these posts to help spread the word out to everybody who wants to know what's going on. Tonight's episode was brought to you by Ted's Marine and by H&R Block right here in Page, Arizona, and by the Page Public Library. We will see you guys tomorrow morning. I do believe we are doing a morning show. I'll have to recheck with Lois on that, but I'm pretty sure we are. So we'll catch you first thing in the morning, and then we'll catch you all day throughout all the activities. We will be out and about. You guys have an amazing night, and uh, be safe out there. We'll catch you on the next one.